everyone, it's Monica and welcome back to my channel. Well, today I want to talk about mixed media cards. And I know this isn't everybody's cup of tea. Um, and it's something that takes a lot of work and a lot of planning for some people. But for some other people, they just kind of play with what they have and uh, see what they can produce. Now, when I am creating mixed media cards, I tend to go both ways. Sometimes I plan out my actual project and sometimes I just play with my product and see what I can come up with. But for layouts like this, uh, it definitely takes planning for me. Um, I will work with a lot of different types of ephemera pieces and die cuts just to see what I like. And when I put this one together, um, I found that while I love the new suitcase die, I wasn't necessarily crazy about the colors that I chose. So that's something that I'm going to think about when I put my next project together. But I did want to share with you um, a couple of mixed media cards. And uh, while I'm not going to create this, I'm going to create something similar to this today for you. Now this is another mixed media card that I created and we're going to be creating this particular one um, later on in the month. But I just wanted to share with you a couple of mixed media cards and just kind of talk about the process. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing you're going to want to think about is the base that you're going to work with. And this is just an insert from an old picture frame um, that I'm using. And I did this last year where I just kind of layered it with paper and then I created a scene and it works really nicely. I don't think you can see it, but it stands up nicely and I can use it for the holidays just as an decorative, an extra decorative piece. Um, and this is what we're going to work with. So you want to figure out what your base is going to be. And there's lots of ways you can go. You can use um, old cutting boards. You can use frames. Um, you can use the big tags uh, that Tim Holtz has, but there's lots of baseboards that you can use to create a mixed media project. But today what we're going to be working with is this frame, and this is from Tim Holtz. And when I opened it up, uh, this is kind of how it comes. Um, and it gives you a nice surface to work with. Um, and then once you're finished, you can, you know, put your frame together. So when I am planning to do a layout. Like I said, I tend to kind of figure out exactly the way that I'm going to go first. And then once I have it laid out, I take a picture of it. So that way I have an idea of where my pieces went. Now, another thing that I do when I know that I'm going to be using very intricate pieces, um, and some of Tim's dies can be pretty intricate and take a little bit of time to put together. I'll put those together ahead of time. So for instance, we're going to be working with these little suitcases and I don't know if you can see this, but these little suitcases have lots of little pieces and when you're putting it together, it takes a little bit of time. So I went ahead and I put together my pieces first um, and then what I'll typically do is when I have my dies out and all my glue and everything, I will put more pieces together ahead of time so I can use them in the future. So all I need to do now is just to add the hardware. Um, so that's something that you're going to want to think about as well um, during the month of July is if you know you're going to be using pieces like this, um, but you don't necessarily want to dive right into your Christmas cards in July, you can start getting ready for your projects and you can start cutting out and putting together your little die pieces. Now, I typically will make some sort of black and white uh, project every year because I love how classic black and white looks. And what I'm going to work with to cover this is uh, this collage paper, uh, which is black and white, and it makes wonderful backgrounds, um, just lots of decor, and, and I just like the, how busy it is. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to work with this. And the way that this roll works is it can go either way, because as you can see, you have items that are uh, stamped and decorated both both ways. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do it this way so we can cover the whole thing. And what I typically will use is Mod Podge and I have two types of Mod Podge. I have just the regular gloss luster Mod Podge and then I have the antique matte. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one today. Okay. 
Okay, so the first thing that I did is I went ahead and I just cut out two pieces and um, made it a little bit larger than my actual surface. And then I just have to figure out which pieces I want to go where. Now, for the bottom piece, I'm not going to have to use the whole piece of tissue paper, so I'll have to figure out if I want to use the top part or the bottom part. But honestly, the, the whole background is wonderful, so I don't really think it's going to make a difference what I use. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put some of my Mod Podge on this. And this Mod Podge is actually a little bit more expensive than the regular Mod Podge. Uh, but if you like to have your items have a little bit of a antique mat, uh, this is a nice product to use. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and just use my Mod Podge brush here and I'm just going to add some of my product to the background. Now if you've never used Mod Podge before, it is an adhesive um, and uh, it works great for collaging. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this and you don't want it to be too bubbly or too wet because we are working with tissue paper and it could tear your paper if it's a little bit too wet so kind of keep that in mind and this brush is is really tight so you're able to smooth out your layers nice nicely all right so I'm gonna go ahead and add my first layer here And if you can't get it exactly where you want it, keep in mind you, you can trim. And you want to be careful because sometimes with this adhesive, the drying time is pretty quick. So if you're not able to get it exactly lined up, then I would say be cautious and put it over the edge so that way you can make sure it's not going to tear your paper and then you can just smooth it out to get all the bubbles out all right and then you're going to do the same thing to the bottom portion taking my brush and we're going to add a little bit more adhesive And then we'll add the bottom portion. And then once it dries, we'll go ahead and we'll trim it. Let's see. Now some of you might be concerned about the crease that you see here, but once we start adding our layers, you're not going to be able to see that at all. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. And there's lots of ways that you can camouflage that crease. So don't worry about there being a line there. All right, so I've got my background and I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry a minute. If you are concerned about it sticking or staying down, you can always put another layer on top just for extra glue. And sometimes it's necessary and sometimes it's not. But we're gonna go ahead and make sure we do that over the crease. Uh, just to make sure it's nice and secure. And then we're going to go ahead and let this dry. All right, so I went ahead and I trimmed my edges, as you can see. And remember, you are going to be putting a frame, so it doesn't have to be perfect. All you need to do is make sure it's going to have enough to cover your edge so if you have your frame or whatever background you're doing just kind of keep that in mind now if you're just doing the base and you're not going to have a frame over it, like for instance the Tim Holtz tags your edge doesn't have to be perfect so don't stress about that I know a lot of people think that it needs to be perfect um, but for the type of projects that I do um, I like the imperfection I like for it to look natural and not too you know uh, organic is what I'm saying you know it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be museum quality 
Um, so keep that in mind. This is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be just a project that you work with. And don't get too stressed out if maybe part of it is torn off because you can cover that with distress ink, distress paint, stains. There's a lot of ways you can go to fix some of the imperfections. So you want to make sure that your layer is dry because we are going to be adding some ink. And the colors that I want to work with today are the brush corduroy and the walnut stain. And as you can see, one of them is an oxide and one of them is, a is just the regular ink. And that is intentional um, because the oxide will be a little bit thinner, whereas the ink will be a little bit darker. Now, if your background is too busy, you can always uh, mute it down by using gesso. And if you've never used gesso before, um, it is, what is gesso? It's kind of like a, a, uh, a, a base, a layer. Um, and it will help mute down some of your colors. So that's an option for you as well. So I'm just gonna get a little bit here just to kind of give you an idea of what it does. So as you can see, it does get some white here. You can thin it out. Um, it's just a, a nice, a nice cover. I'm not gonna cover my whole background with gesso but i wanted to give you an idea of, of what you can do with it and you can also thin it down so if this is too thick for you you can add some water and spritz it to um, thin it out a little bit uh, but as you can see i'm just using my fingers just to kind of add some white space um, so that that's another option for you as well Now you want to be careful because this is tissue paper so uh, if you rub too hard you might tear it so kind of keep that in mind as well All right. now your gesso isn't necessarily necessarily an adhesive so if you're looking for it to be able to work as a glue that's not necessarily what it works for so keep that in mind as well it's just an ability to kind of whitewash your background a little bit to give it a little bit more interest all right so now we're ready to add some of our ink and for the edges I'm going to use my walnut stain just because again I want it to look kind of old and walnut stain tends to be my go-to ink for my edging. And all I'm doing is just using my sponge applicator, getting some ink on it, and then adding it around the edges. Okay. And where you had that white, that walnut stain is going to pick up really nicely so kind of keep that in mind as well now if your tissue is dry and your uh, edges aren't curled up you shouldn't have any problem with it tearing you probably don't want to add your ink this way because it might pull up your edges so make sure you are working on the outside and then for the brush corduroy. I'm gonna just take off some of this ink here. Get another dauber. I might just actually just kind of brush over it just to add more color. Yeah, works well. Okay, and that will help mute out your your background as well. All right, now we're ready to start putting our design together and typically I like to start with the focal point for my backgrounds um, and I'm going to go ahead and use this ephemera piece from Tim Holtz and I'm going to add a little bit more walnut stain to it. Okay. 
and I've already, like I said, I take pictures of layouts once I've been playing with it. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my phone and pull up my layout. And let me just share this with you. So this is kind of what I came up with. So that's kind of the design that I'll work with. So it's always nice to have some sort of an idea, uh, especially when you're filming because it takes me a long time to come up with my layouts. Uh, but some sort of an idea of, of where you wanna go. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start layering up. You wanna start with your bottom layer first, of course, and then just start layering up. And I'm going to, again, use my Mod Podge for my adhesive. And I'm just going to add my adhesive on the back. Okay, and then figure out where I'm going to go here. And then I like to use my brayer just to make sure that it's flat and I get good adhesion. And with Mod Podge, you can add it underneath as well as on top. Um, so if you need to add a little bit more, a lot of times when I'm finished, I'll come in just with my finger and wherever it might be curling up, I will fix it. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so I've got my bottom layer. Now, like I said, I'm just gonna start working up and my next layer is going to be my world and then my this isn't going to touch anything, so that's going to be about right there. And then I have my numbers. Now, this project is not your traditional Christmas colors, and that was intentional for me. I don't always like to use traditional Christmas colors with my projects. I really love doing black and white because, like I said, I think that's very classic and that's kind of where I went with this with a little bit of color and then I am going to be using a paper doll now I want her to be right in the middle so before I actually adhere my 25 I'll make sure everything is lined up correctly so that's kind of what I'm doing now is I'm figuring out how much how high how tall how tall I need this to be and I want my Christmas to show because it is a Christmas design so there is some strategy involved in the way I am layering my my items okay and then I'm going to come in with my let's see come in with my suitcases and then up a little higher so this is what takes the most time and that's why I said it's a good idea to typically figure out where you're going ahead of time um, just so you have all the pieces that you know you're going to need and I think that is probably going to work something like that and then she'll go right there. Okay, so now we have a general idea. Let's go ahead and start adhering our pieces. So the next piece that I'm gonna work with is my world. And again, I'm just adding my Mod Podge to the back to adhere it. And then we'll come over it. Now this type of a layout you can do not only I'm you know I'm making a frame but you can do it with cards as well. Um, so uh, you just have to make sure that you take into consideration 
the size of your card and the size of the pieces you're going to be working with. Um, but you can certainly do these types of layered projects with, with greeting cards. They just might be a little bit bigger. Maybe a little bit harder to do it with the A2 cards um, because your pieces will have to be a lot smaller. But it, it certainly can be done. Alright, so I'd like to have that toys showing. So again, if there's a particular part of the word you want showing, you have to be a little strategic about your placement. And then I want her to be in the middle. So somewhere around there. Now, all of the projects that you see in my Christmas in July series are going to be in my shop. Um, I don't typically keep a lot of the projects that I create because my house would be full of Monica art. Um, so if there's anything that you see me creating and you want, be sure to check out the shop because I will have a lot of these items in there available for you. And of course, because I'm only making one, like for instance, this will probably be in the shop and I only have one. Um, if it is something you're interested in, I would recommend getting it sooner rather than later because it may not be there when you go back for it. All right. Now for her, I'm going to actually use glue, so we're going to hold off on that a minute. I just wanted to kind of get her placement. Uh, and I think I'm going to do glue for the suitcases as well because I want to make sure they stick. Probably could have done glue for this as well, um, but we're going to go over it. All right, so I'm using my 3-in-1 beacon. And let's see. Okay. And then the next piece. Oops. You should see my desk right now. It is covered. I've been filming all my videos for my Christmas in July series and my desk is a mess. Um, and then we will do the last suitcase here. Now if you are it's upside down. If you are going to have a sentiment down there you kind of keep that in mind as well. I'm going to put something here I haven't decided yet. Maybe this will go over here. Alright, so we've got our suitcases down and then the next thing we want to do is our girl. And she's going to go right on the suitcase. Now you have some layers that you're dealing with here, so you're going to want to make sure that you hold it down and make sure that it does catch because your layers are a little bit uh, unbalanced. Okay. And I'm going to give that a minute to dry and I'll be right back. Okay, so everything is glued down. One thing that I noticed after I glued it all down is when you are working with a frame, keep in mind what your borders are. Um, on this particular one, it looks like my 
suitcase is a little bit too far to the left, which is fine for me. I like it to look organic anyway, but if you want everything to be within the frame, you just want to keep that in mind. And then another thing, if you are going to do any layers underneath items, you probably want to do those first before you glue it down. Um, I know I wanted to put a little ticket stub here. I was still able to kind of sneak it in, but kind of take that into consideration. And then finally, um, I wanted this little ticket here to show the bus ticket. Um, and this, these tickets, the two tickets I'm using, are coming from this ticket book from Tim Holtz. Um, if you've never seen this, it's got lots of fun tickets that you can work with. But I also have some actual vintage tickets in my shop. So be sure to check out that as well if you're going to be using any type of tickets for your projects this Christmas. All right, so let's go ahead and put this in place. And I want my Christmas exhibition to show. So again, we're being strategic about this. And then that'll pretty much do it. All I need to do is glue down my frame and then you have a nice Christmas collage and again this can work for cards um, can work for backgrounds lots of ways that you can do this um, but before I actually glue this on uh, I wanted to go ahead and color her up just a little bit and typically when I am coloring my paper dolls I'm using my distress crayon so let's just give her a little bit of color um, and I think I'm going to go with red for Christmas let's go with a red dress festive red all right and when I color her up I just add my crayon right to her dress and then I'll take my my brush along with my water and just kind of add a little bit of tint to her clothes and as you can see the crayon reacts really well to the water uh, the only thing you need to worry about are your brush strokes And you can also use Q-tips to help with those brush strokes. In fact, I might I might do that after the fact as well, just to get rid of some of those brush strokes. But I first wanted to get my color in. Okay, and I'm just going to soften this up a little bit. with a q-tip but just enough to give it a nice color and as you can see the q-tip helps take away some of those harsh brush lines And that'll pretty much do it all right so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to put together kind of a house 
decorative item. Um, I know a lot of people are intimidated putting these together, but what I would say is just plan your layout first before you actually commit to anything and make sure you know what area you have to work with. So that way when you are doing your layering, uh, you'll make sure you keep it within what you want to see. All right, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this project for my Christmas in July series. And we'll be back next time where we're actually going to put together a uh, mixed media card. Um, and don't forget, I will have all of the items that I'm creating in my Christmas in July series over in the shop. So this item along with this item uh, will be available. All right, everybody. We'll see you again next time.